Hello. Welcome to Deep Dive. I'm very depressed today because my friend Elisa decided that we're going to watch Xanadu. 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 <laughs> oh, hey, real quick, if you want to send us movies that Elisa will totally uh, pick, and make our lives bad, send them to this P.O. box right here. This P.O. box right here and we'll, we'll watch them. I can't even tell you how many bad, bad, horrible, awful things you guys have sent us so far. Go to the Patreon and donate because then you'll know what's in the box. Bye! They've even thought through the logistics. Oh. Ah. Oh. So the plane gets bigger uh, every time. But it's changing now. It, it, now it's, it's the Concord. Yeah. The, the staple of modernism. <laughs> the Concord. At the time. Oh. oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> All right. Well. Treatment. Xanadu. Yeah. This is so good. I need you at like a two. You're at like a 50,000 <laughs> oh, about Electric Light Orchestra. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so wait, excited. really? Sorry, the soundtrack? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Just All right. Yellow. So All right. into it. All right. So Xanadu, the, um, what? So we're watching Xanadu. The skies are dark because the stars are all here, folks. I don't know either. Well, but you I'm... were leveled. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> God, Mikey's. Oh no, he's on the floor. We're gonna need emergency oh, God. surgery. Oh What happened? In the studio. Oh, he's saying we should go on. Our go brave, on me. Our, our brave our, captain. Our baby boy. All right. This is my fault. I'm going to say this right now. I love this film. The rest of the people I work with may have different opinions, but I unabashedly love every part of this film, except for the main character. So I love it effortlessly, but I have no goddamn idea what is happening at all. But what has happened in the movie? Oh, Lord. While you were eating Lemonade Sour Patch Kids. So this shame. guy, Sonny, Sonny Malone, which is so, let's just make up a name to stick on a screenplay. But that's because he's very, like, not a character. No, he's, he's a walking jaw. Yes, yes, apparently he drives the women crazy. Is this the same Sonny Malone that drives women crazy? I'm gonna go find out. No. No, I don't Not think so. Not at all. I, I don't know. Let's ask the women in the room. Right. I, them jeans. No. You into this? You ready? Them you ready? Them jeans. I told you. I don't know who she is. Oh, God. This, this hair. Now, this guy. This hair is so good. My name is Twarl. <laughs> so there was an artist, and he doesn't do an art. And <laughs> kiss art. Okay. Abandoned roller rank. Yes. Dancing. Ghost dancing. Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the movie so far. Nailed it. Got it in one, this guy. To make that slightly less cryptic. <laughs> Sonny Malone, not a murderer. Not a murderer. Not a murderer. But a painter in California who specializes in the definitely lost art of painting album covers way bigger for marketing purposes. But see, here's the problem, and okay. this is where the tension comes in. We start him off with, he's trying to create art and he can't, he can't. So he crumples up this piece of paper and in just a fit of despair, he litters. Wait. I don't know what's happening, but I'm so excited. I'm into this. It is it too early to say that this actually is my aesthetic? Like, <laughs> neon trash? Neon trash. 
That's me. I guess littering used to be okay. Mm -hmm. That invokes the muses. The muses do this lovely, like modern dance and we get to see all of them and then they fly away in bursts of light. Yeah, they illuminate the Hollywood sign. Yeah, it's, it's fun. There's a lot of neon in this. Mm -hmm. But the idea is, the sort of implication is that it's her and this other, you know, is it a gaggle? Is it a school of women? Sort of dance out of this mural, somehow inspired by his shitty art. Um, Schwab. <laughs> People, <laughs> often, <laughs> People often associate the 70s as the decade everybody was on drugs, but I submit it was the 80s. <laughs> uh, the women have ran off the mural, it looks like an olive garden. Oh, I missed when he met Olivia Newton-John. Olivia Mutant-John. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Newton-John. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now I get, I'm never going to be able to not say Olivia Mutant-John. Which is fine. <laughs> Which is totally fine. Well, he gets sort of like drive by smooched. Yes. And then peace. Skates up, kisses, yeah. skates away. It's it's a pretty baller move. Yeah. Like very much a power play, which I like coming from the muses. So he's obsessed with her. Yes. And she just kind of like runs up and kisses him on the beach and totally pulls like a see you later, which I thought was pretty funny because when he finds her later, because he obsessively is looking for her, mm -hmm. she's just like, oh, hey, uh, no thing. There's no thing here. No. There's I'm just nothing. gonna like skate through an abandoned building. Olivia Newton's John's character is like bubbly is the only word I can yeah. describe her with because we've not gotten a lot from her except she really loves roller skating mm -hmm. with her arms out. My whole thing is that that is a thigh high slouch roller skate. Yes. Thigh high slouch if, if roller skates. No, this is what Jaws happens. Sonny decides he needs to make money instead of make art. I know it rhymed. I didn't mean to. No, thanks. Thank you. He's trying to create art, but according to his boss, these album covers are too artsy. Ah, uh, Luke decided to drop in. Where's your white flag? You have a way with words, Simpson. You know that? We talk like you human beings talk. Mm -hmm. I thought we discussed Hello, this on human. The phone when I, uh, Decided to take My name is Brad. We did. Yeah, his boss is the most like 80s movie boss of all time. He's never like a guy who actually owns an art studio, which he is. But I have one question. Why the hell did you take me back? Simple. You're good. And you're the fastest painter around. But this time no more artsy, craftsy, sunny Malone touches, huh? Just enlarge the album cover the way I give it to you. And oh, okay. in loud and clear. Yeah. But it's like everyone out there is in an art studio, but his office is like 80s cocaine kindergarten cop villain kind of like. Like upturned pencil pomegranate on the desk for no reason. Yeah. Like he's just gonna tear into that shit next chance he gets and just like. I don't know. It's, it's, it's Chekhov's grapefruit. <laughs> and then he just gets obsessed with this mystery woman that smooched him. Well, cause she shows up on the album cover he's painting. Right. So then he's like, oh, I've seen her twice in one day. This is fate. And he goes to find her. He runs into what seems like a homeless Gene Kelly playing the clarinet on the beach because of course he can. You know, I used to be in the music business, but now I haven't watched my car retired. It's a refined name for bum. Anyway, now we're best friends. We gotta spend all our time together. Oh. Without question, the best thing out about it right now is Gene Kelly. Oh. Who is phenomenal? Like he, act, he's acting in this like he's acting in a Scorsese movie where everyone is nice, basically. Those women just let him take the motorcycle <laughs> in exchange for popcorn. Everyone in this movie is like effortlessly yeah. nice yeah. and like kind. I understand why you love this movie. It's pure at heart in a in a mm -hmm. way that I really have not seen in like movies of the aughts and, and the teens. Yeah. It is clearly yearning for a time 
that no longer exists even when this movie yeah, existed, it, let alone It kind now. of feels like it's trying to be in three or four different time periods yeah. and fulfill the needs of those different time periods, but only in like one scene at a time. And then they're like, cool, we have enough of these scenes. We have a movie. Oh, they're whistling now, too. I think... What saddens me the most is that this was clearly made by people who adored the cinema of the 50s. Yeah. And it's like, yes. why can't we still do that? And then it's like, oh, oh yeah. that's why. <laughs> and we find out that Gene Kelly's actually super rich because he is a famous musician. And then he dances. It's tonally just kind of like, <laughs> and then dance. So there's, there's kind of that disconnect, but I think the music is really lovely. ALL is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sort of all over the place, but we're kind of setting up this kind of thing where the central conflict seems to be between art and commerce. Oh, it's, is that it? <laughs> is that the film? Look at his face, he's so Oh, that's great. This is the most wholesome episode of Deep Time. <laughs> <laughs> Until it gets raunchy and yeah, shitty again. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> I really want to read the original script of whatever this movie was supposed to be, because I get the sense that this was one of the 70s things where someone's like, it's a really cool thing where people open up like a roller rink or something like that. And then like money and executives kept coming in and then like, another dance number! And then it just became what it is yeah. now. I don't know. But it's fun and awesome and I love it. All right, All right. salted caramel Oreo thins. Here we go. Yeah, all right. They're fine. I like the it reminds me of something. Oh my god, she's broken. Ah! Wow. Behind they you. pulled the horror movie reveal. They did. And she's gonna be right behind me. You know those McDonald's cookies? Oh. Mm. It tastes like those. Yeah. Oh, she's not there anymore. <gasps> oh, man. Yeah. Hello? I mean, hey! Oh, I'm sorry. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm this could turn into a like, vampire you? movie very quickly. How long have you been standing here? <laughs> so now they are dancing to a song where they are singing. Oh! Hey. Oh, he's gone! Oh, he's gone now! Oh. He died. He's in hell. <laughs> it cuts to a Dark Souls screen. You died! <laughs> Mind freak! <laughs> I, I think I do too. <laughs> like, this isn't even hard to love. No, yeah. no. Sometimes Deep Dog's hard to love. Oh, yeah. This is not hard to love. <laughs> it's hard to understand. Yeah. Oh, God, you're screwed. Yeah. You have no chance. That's why I love it, though. Here's that. You want a cookie? <laughs> oh, fail. That one was in my ear. You don't want that one. <laughs> so, we're still watching Xanadu, which we're excited about. So stoked. What has happened so far? So much and yet so little. Yes. <laughs> I don't have any idea what's going on at all, no. but I love it. I'm having so much fun. I am getting such a contact high from being in the same room as this movie. <laughs> so I'm usually a teetotaler by nature. Don't drink, don't smoke. What do I do? I feel slightly elevated and slightly enhanced. And I don't think it was the Oreo Thins. This movie's doing a lot. It is doing the most. Yeah. Um, and I'm and I'm a huge fan. The movie gets a contact high from itself. Yeah, exactly. Because at one point, it's... just just to go to the the best sequence from this was the random Don Bluth animation sequence that sort of goes sword in the stone, but like yeah. sword in the stone plus cocaine. And it was really beautifully animated. Yes. It's um, gorgeous. And they turned into fish at mm -hmm. one point and then birds. birds. However, she was still wearing leg warmers as a bird. As a cartoon bird with leg warmers. It's great, I love it. Which is my favorite genre of film. It's fantastic. Plot wise, oh, it's weird. 
So what happens in this movie, Sam? Please tell us all of the facts. The question is not what, Mike, <laughs> but when. I don't know, this is like a film thing. Y'all film people know how people usually set this up when they're successful at it. I don't know how long has passed in any of this plot. You're not wrong, is the thing. The plot is so, like, tertiary at this point. Like, not even secondary. No. We're like, cool, we're just hanging out with this group of people as they do songs and dance in various settings and in various forms of media, which is yeah. fun. I like Gene Kelly a lot. He's, he's not in Act 2 as much. He's, I mean, he's been the driving factor of, of all this. He's just, he just wants to make a new club and he's supplying all the money and all the dreams. And... Well, maybe his dream is big enough for the both of you. I adore watching this movie with you guys. So here we are, someone who believes that dreams come easy. And someone who doesn't know what they believe. But yeah, I have no idea what the plot is, but Gene Kelly's still around, so I'm in. At some point, um, Budget Andy Gibb does tell Grapefruit Boss to kiss off. So I guess that's a thing. He does. It that was... happens. Oh, yeah. Relax, it's okay. Are you loaded? Because when you sober up, you're going to be real sorry. See straight. If you told me if I didn't do things the right way, I'd be fired. I we love right. how everybody's uh, like, no, but are you high? Like, for real, just yeah. tell me if you're high. It's hard to combine that, like, very real world thing with, like, alien mural sirens. I don't think blowing off your job to hang out with an alien and drink champagne. You is. shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> it's the only thing he has in life. Let him have it. <laughs> I know we've talked about editing before, and again, I'm the least qualified person to talk about this. Um, but there is this editing transition I have never seen before, mm -hmm. and I can't say I'm surprised by that. Mm. It's not like a Ghost of Mars situation where it's like, okay, you have a crossfade, you gotta mm -hmm. wipe. Mm -hmm. And it sort of stays there. We are playing in the space of yeah. the Venetian blind. Yes. We're going really to Venice, we're going to Rome, we're going diagonal. Let's see what we're we can going, do with going this at an one angle. concept and just like really just tear it apart and see. So we have like vertical, Diagonal. I think there was like, one was from like a, the center going yeah. out, which like screens don't do that, but this editing does. Oh really? They're yeah. like leg warmers. They are. Oh, that's my name. Whoa! Whoa! Hey, I've never watched a movie where the transitions get that much of a like reaction. It's great. So to to touch on the plot for a moment, because I mm. think I have some idea actually now that I that I'm putting it together. Budget Andy Gibb and Gene Kelly become really fast friends and business partners, and it seems yeah. like they shared the same muse yes. once upon a time, and that is their big connection. So Gene Kelly's character mm. is teaming up with Sonny, yep. the guy from the Warriors, to reopen Adito or whatever, because yeah, the... <laughs> the letters are all missing. But they're reopening that place as a cool roller skating dance club, I guess is actually. Xanadu. And then there's this really fun scene where they're kind of trying to figure out what is the sort of vibe of, of this new place that mm -hmm. they're trying to put together. Yeah. The uh, like 50s versus 80s musical interlude was fantastic. Gene Kelly wants the like classic 1950s big band up on stage, swing dancing happening down on the floor. But of course, Sonny wants like super 80s, bright neon orange, rock and super roll. androgynous. Over there, a great rock and roll band. Oh. This is the 80s. Oh. Wow. Do you really get to say this is the 80s, like, a then, month into wow, the wow, 80s? Wow. And so they actually do those two different scenes. And what I think is really lovely is throughout the scene it seems very, not competitive, but very contrary mm. to each other. And by the end of it, they're like dancing together and the actual stage, like, interlocks. Oh, oh, oh! The 50s and the 80s are yeah. colliding! Oh my god! And this is where girl talk. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the birth of girl time. It is a literal mash up. Yes, they they mash the two sets together and they mash the dancers together. That was amazing. Yeah, and it was even like shot differently, which was cool. Oh, this is shot like an 80s music video, and this is shot like mm -hmm. more traditional. 1950s, this is your frame, versus the 1980s, like, this is your face! So that scene was just really amazing, and I think it encompasses a lot of what I like about this film. There's a huge amount of diversity in it. There's a lot of skill that's put on display mm -hmm. by everybody be it the camera people who shoot the scenes in different ways. The dancers are incredible. The costumes are incredible. Mm -hmm. These costumes though. Yeah, the costumes are immaculate. It's a little known fact, Santa do one project runway this season. <laughs> it was crazy, I couldn't believe it. The makeup is incredible. Oh my gosh, the contour on the, the band. So good. Alicia, yeah. are no. you seeing the contour on their no. faces? And just the like, just, it's like sideburns, but not. Yeah, Cause yeah. Cause it goes down his face. It's, it's a like, cheekbone that could stab a man it, in the yeah. back. Yeah, exactly. it's like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna give you stronger cheekbones so much as turn them into knives. That was one of my favorite scenes, I yes. think. Other than the plot being Silly, I think. Uh, I, there's no part about this film that I dislike. It doesn't matter. It's it's really cool because every time you think you know where it's gonna go, it's another surprise, and the surprise is a delight. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Yep. How's it all going? So far, so good. Oh, what here we go. Is... <laughs> the Mardi Gras zone. Oh no. Oh, I thought this was the the club. I didn't Proto realize Joker. it was a shopping. This is a mannequin prequel. I would watch that. Right? Right. Right. We just, I mean, could we look at those tips of movement. Yeah, on the move. We just finished Xanadu, and as you guys may have guessed, I love this film. So I had them add a star to my face for as many stars as I would give this movie that that many. I gotta say, going into this movie knowing pretty much nothing other than one of the singles that came out of the soundtrack, it was really fun. This movie is a delight. I've loved it from the beginning, I've loved every part of this film, and I thought it was so incredible that this whole movie doesn't really have a plot, the love story is loose at best. Plot thinner than this guy's acting chops. I don't know what was going on with the main character in terms of his sheer woodenness. I feel bad. Let's just, let's just put him to the side for a second. This film, unlike pretty much anything we've watched on Deep Dive, cause like obviously we are trying to like do a thing here and watch really difficult movies and this one wasn't difficult. It was just fun. This is the most fun we've had shooting any episode. Although Ghost of Mars did reach some pretty amazing heights too. I feel like this movie should not have been in the box. I feel like one of the reasons that this movie was in the box is because, not sure if you knew this, I read it off of Wikipedia, this movie was apparently one of the inspirations for the Razzies. For the record, I'm the one that put it in the box. And I'm the one who picked it, because this movie's so good. <laughs> I had a great time watching this. But specifically the things that I love the most it gave us music, it gave us magic, it gave us a fashion 80s try on clothes mm, montage. It's a fashion montage. Yes, it's an 80s montage where people come out and then people go, no. <laughs> yeah, like Gene Kelly's trying to impress these people. Hey! I That's that. a Oh, yes. oh my god. Yes. yes. It's working. It's working. Yes! Oh my god, how does it get better? Seriously, it was great watching Gene Kelly just like get back into his moves. Gene Kelly was amazing. I love that that he got some moments to shine. He was probably one of the best parts of this movie. There's this moment where Gene Kelly kind of tells you what this movie is about. Kira is taken away by her father Zeus 
after she's revealed that she is a muse and has to, you know, leave since she's a god. Olivia Newton-John is just a just an Aussie treasure. Sonny goes and he sits on the same rock where we first met Gene Kelly, and Gene Kelly shows up and is like, "What are you doing? We're opening tonight." Looking like super snazzy because he went through that 80s montage of getting new clothes. I didn't know I needed an 80s montage with Gene Kelly in it. I'm sorry, what if them was wearing a wrestling belt as a fashion accessory? Sonny's like, I can't do it. Xanadu was dead. He says that because Kira's gone. And he's like, well, it was only possible because Kira was there. And Gene Kelly pretty solemnly states that Dreams don't die because somebody leaves. Dreams die because we kill them. There's something amazing that a movie that is ostensibly not really about a lot ends with Gene Kelly achieving his dream, which was to open an 80s discotheque Bee Gees like roller rink thing. This came out in 1980, right? So this is kind of a post Grease Let's see if we can capture that kind of movie musical time in a bottle thing again. <laughs> okay, what's up, Flash Gordon villain? <laughs> what is that? Flash. Oh. <laughs> do what you dream to do. It doesn't matter because it's your dream and it's what you want to be doing. Even if it's silly, like opening up a roller disco that's 80s and 50s themed that at one point has like a cowboy hoedown situation in it. Well, there's so it doesn't mean it doesn't mean hoedown. This fucking hoedown. I think this, this would have to be cut. This isn't great. It's still fantastic. It's still fun. It's bright. It's neon. It's happy. And, and we could definitely use a lot more of that. I really enjoyed it for so many reasons. It gave us full animation. It gave us roller disco. It was amazing. Like that set is incredible. We all were like, I wish that place existed. And that's what the muses are about. They're about invoking this like creativity. And that's what this movie is about. And so I really enjoyed it. So what if there's no plot? It's a great movie with which to eat Oreos. And I'm trying to imagine like my dad seeing this and being like, yo, what the hell? Aww. Well, I guess I'll go join the Warriors now. I want, I want that jacket. This jacket though. Can we get, if you know where to find a jacket like that, let us know. It is in Send it to this PO box. box. This movie's awesome. It's about not giving up on your dreams. It exists in here, and possibly over here. <laughs> anyway, the point is, Xanadu was a lot of fun. Ding. Next time on Deep Dive. We're gonna try something a little bit different here on Deep Dive. Don't do it yet. Uh, we're gonna tell our patrons to Check out what's in the box. The the taco tier and up now actually knows what's in the dive box at all times. Please bring it to me. There it is. Now what's gonna happen is my castmates are going to see what's in this box because it is delightfully evil this week. <laughs> so without further ado. Oh. <laughs> this one isn't even opened. And should stay there. Oh. Way. This okay. Um, oh, I actually really wanted to see that one. Me uh -oh. too. Oh, That's okay. never if a good like sign. If you'd like to weigh in, join the taco tier. See you next time. <laughs>